Hey everybody, CD59 here. We're getting back. It's been a couple weeks since I've been with you. Remember, we're in the midst of making myself a hunting knife. Uh, 1095 hard carbon steel. Not stainless, nothing like it. Last go around, I did the heat treat on it. I had a little uh, furnace I built in the backyard. Definitely going to have to improve on that. But it got me going, got me where I need to be. Still straight as an arrow, I got no warpage. Uh, when I cut this, I ground this down to a knife edge, almost, almost. I uh, talked to my heat treat guy, he said, no, you're going to crack that baby. So I took a file, and I got it about the thickness of a dime, maybe. I'm going to put that back on here, grind us down to close to our edge, so then we can do the actual sharpening when that day comes. That's well, a little bit down the road yet. Got some scale on it, most of it chipped off, peeled off. I'm going to get her cleaned up, get her back in the silver. I got the same old, same old four man belt sander. <laughs> Well, belt grinder's less than ideal for this. I got nothing on this side to worry about. I got this stuff here where it's hitting the blade. So I got different, different. This side's looking really, I like that. I like that a lot. Nice and even. This side here, I'm way up on. Very hard to hold it. Might have to buy me a different grinder if I uh, decide to pursue this. Which I think I am. More so. Yeah, it looks good enough to uh, feel dressed deer. with that heavy one we're gonna put in a little bit of a lighter one that was 80 this is what 120 <clears throat> jumping up to a 120 grit
to a pretty good edge. <clears throat> oh yeah, that side looks plenty mighty good. This side I got too much. But once I get that uh, all the black sanded off that, yeah, we're looking good. I'm gonna get a different sander out. All right, we got the old Ryobi palm sander. What are we doing? Uh, about 120 grit. <laughs> That's going to skin deer. Skin them and bone them. Put them in the backpack. Not bad. Not bad at all, folks. Everything is in the white 360, I think. I'm just going to put a little bit of a design on there. This up here, I'm going to dip it in ferric chloride. I got a cutting edge. A little bit of steel work. A little bit of a ceramic. slip chip, chip. That maybe it would be razor blade sharp. Uh, let's move some cameras. Alrighty, folks, there we are. We've got this thing uh, ready to go. I got her sanded down, like I say. We are going to put a little bit of a design work on here, dip it in ferric chloride. It's also going to give it a like a sheeny finish, a bead blast, if you want to call it. I've done this before, and I started using like a dollar a bottle fingernail polish. Doesn't work for crap. This sucks. Then I went to using this stuff, testers, model airplane paint, we call it just acrylic paint. That is not too awful bad. Then watching some other stuff, I finally broke down. I went and I bought a $7 bottle of fingernail polish, believe it or not. And I got to say, playing around with it, it works better than anything that I have used. That's what we're going to use. All we're doing is we're protecting the steel that is underneath this fingernail polish. And we're going to dip it in ferric chloride solution. And it's going to etch everything else. We're going basic, basic bind pattern, I call it. Boy, I'm shaky today. I've got about three fourths of the three fourths of the uh, whatever you call them, the hairs cut off this paintbrush because I want to keep the lines as thin as I can.
Granted, people, you find people out there that are a whole lot more artistic. Ah, that ain't worth a damn. More so than me. A lot more so than me. When this dries, we're going to take like an X-Acto knife, razor blade knife, whatever you prefer. And we're just going to chip away a little bit of places. going to point this one up. Yeah, that looks good. We're going to let it go with that. If you want to spend the money, go get yourself some fingernail polish remover to clean all this up when we're done. Or... Go get yourself some acetone. That's all fingernail polish is, I do believe. Okay, I've just been scratching away. Nothing more than uh, X-Acto knives, we've always called them. Nice smooth lines, nice even flow. We're going to do one more thing before we dip it in acid. Where I had the notches up here for my marking, I got rid of them. We're just going to push some hash marks on the spine. Yeah, it's probably enough. That is so on uh don't need to be perfect. We don't even clean that up. As soon as that's dry in the uh ferric chloride, she's gonna go. Hang on. Alright, folks, I've been chipping away with this old exacto knife. I think I'm down to the point where you know it's looking good enough. I got some ribs across the top of it. Got it on this side. They're not the same, but you know what? It's not like it's a big deal. It's going to look good. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to submerge it in some stuff called ferric chloride. This stuff right here, Radio Shack. They closed these stores down in my part of the world about five years ago. That's how old this stuff is. Uh, I mixed it 50-50 when I used to do this more often than I have for a long time. That's just, this is uh, five years, six years, seven years since I've used it. So I'm really, really hoping it's still got some pizzazz to it. Uh, the wood is probably going to come up to about like that. So we're going to go deeper than that. So everything you see will have an etched effect to it. Just like rum and coke. Not quite. All right, we're going to let that sit for about 30 minutes. We're going to take a uh, something I used to use, denim, small piece of denim, relatively uh, strong cloth. And there's going to be a black residue where the acid is eating, uh, the ferric chloride. It's not actually acid. Where it's eating away at the steel, and we're going to put it back in there for another 30 minutes. This is the effect we're looking for right there. This is a Russell Green River blade. I've done quite a few of these actually, but uh, this I said is the first one I've ever cut from a chunk of iron. Piece of a coat, brass, rivets. That's a good looking knife. That's pretty long time. Uh, took a long time to do that, but you know what? You paint a little bit on there, you let it dry, you pick away with the uh, X-Acto knife, you put a little more on there, you let it dry. It ain't like you got to do it all at one setting. You know, if it takes you a week to get it done, uh, time you got, no problem. 30 minutes, we're going to let this set. We're going to wash it off 30 more minutes. Like I say, just a piece of, I use denim all the time in the past. That's what I'm using today. If your fingernail polish, paint, whatever you're using is done right, you are not going to rub it off. It's going to take acetone. You just want to get that black residue. So once you get so much residue on there, basically, the ferric chloride is no longer in contact with your knife. 
It ain't doing anything, it's just soaking. Okay, that baby was soaking for an hour and some pretty uh, heavy duty scrubbing under the sink, hot water. Took a lot of the paint off, the rest. We're gonna take off with the acetone. And you want to be careful working with some of this stuff, especially the acetone. A lot of brain dead liberals out in California, they, they answer, they might have been working with the acetone sometime in their life, you know, killed a few brain cells. You never know. Never know, folks. You just don't know. Hash marks came out good. Ooh, we got a little bit of blowout right there. But you know what? When this is done, when I get it all cleaned up, we're going to steel wool it down. But the stuff is still working. It's still in contact. We're going to take whatever kind of oil you got close by. Walk away from it. Forget about it. You're done. Uh, we'll bring this back in a few hours, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. We'll do some more on it. Show you what else we're going to do to it. There we go. Hey, for you folks just coming along, uh, you want to stop over on Rumble, Google uh, Cave Dweller 1959 or on the bottom of most of my videos. I got a link on it. I drop a new video every Friday over there. Uh, T-shirts, you want to get some? Hit my store. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Don't forget my Patreon page. There's a lot of stuff over there. Most firearm stuff will be on Patreon from now on, seeing YouTube has a uh, eh, sore spot about them. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll be back. We're going to do some more on the knife when we return.